Oh, oh. Okay, just <laughs> give me a sec here, guys. I'm recovering from a massive brain injury, as you can see. I just got back from the hospital this morning. They stitched me all up, and uh, I'm going to have a pretty nasty scar, but I think I'm going to be okay. Um, tell you what, let me just light up one of these medicated cigarettes, and then we'll get into the actual video, right? Okay, yeah. You know, you know it's a good cigarette when it doesn't even have to touch the flame in order to get lit. And you know it's even better when you breathe into it to get the smoke to come out rather than inhale it. You know, it's great. Okay, well, as we all know, no One Piece chapter today, unfortunately. Um, but that doesn't mean I have nothing to talk about, alright? In fact, in situations like this, when Friday comes along and there's no One Piece chapter, I have my magical mystery fun box to tell me all I need to know about what I need to do today, alright? This is where I go when I can't come up with an idea for a video. This is where I keep everything that uh, rather should not be seen to the world of mortal man. Uh, uh, it's always really weird when I have to look into that thing. Alright, let's see what we got here. Smoker and Tashiki video. Okay, we can do that. So, uh, yeah, this is something I've been throwing around for a while. I'm just gonna set this thing down there and chain it back up. Okay. Um, I've been wanting to do these various discussion videos for a while. I kind of got myself stuck in a mire for a little bit, though, because I'm like, let's do all the different Straw Hat discussion videos. And I'm like, well, I can't really do anything until I get those done. And then after those, I was like, let's do the Supernova discussions. But then after the Supernovas, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we'll probably go to the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. We'll do a series on that. But at some point, I just want to talk about random characters that don't necessarily fit into, like, a really select group. I mean, like, Smoker and Tashigi, they have course are marines but i'm not gonna do a video on every single marine in one piece until i really run out of ideas <laughs> you know like, like we've talked about every other character in the story all right guys here's a discussion video on on R rear admiral kadar yeah he's a real interesting guy i actually like kadar he was he was cool or maybe it was catter i don't know i liked his glasses okay but uh yeah we're doing smoker and tashigi today i also want to do a kobe video at some point so we'll get to him but yeah and smoker and tashigi Considering that they are always together, like in every single arc that they play a role, they are both there. It's never like there's an arc where Smoker's there but Tashigi isn't, or Tashigi's there and Smoker isn't, alright? They're always together. Maybe there's something going on there? Probably not, probably not. I don't know, I don't know. Is there... I, 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 Smoker seems to me like the guy that has the really rough exterior, like, I'm a tough marine! But I don't know, behind closed doors, he might be a rather gentle soul, or maybe that's why he keeps Tashigi around, to have a little bit of the, you know, the, the kindness and the tenderness in the air. I, I don't know, man. I don't know what their exact relationship is. I would assume that Smoker, you know, he was at Logtown, he was the captain there, and, and I don't know, Tashigi just wandered in to join the Marines, and she was all clumsy and everything, and Smoker was like, oh my god, I'm gonna make a man out of you, woman. And then the Mulan music starts queuing up or something. I, I don't know what their relationship is, but I would like to see exactly like how they first met at least. I think that's something that's worth at least a few flashback panels in a chapter, you know? Um, okay, so I'm just going to start off by the neat little dynamic that Smoker and Tashigi have. And, and more importantly, what they kind of represent in the broader story of One Piece. Because it's actually something really cool what Oda did here, okay? Um... At first glance, if we're just going by the first time we meet Tashigi and Smoker at Logtown and what our first impressions are, it seems like Oda is setting up these two characters to be the opposites or the rivals of Luffy and Zoro. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's pretty much, like, spelled out for you. The Straw Hats arrive at Logtown at the very end of the East Blue arc. In fact, it's the last arc in the East Blue, and they're about to enter the Grand Line, this, you know, graveyard of ships, very mysterious sea. We don't know much about it at that point. Um, and then Luffy runs into Smoker in Logtown, and Zoro runs into Tashigi. Now, Smoker is threatening because he is not only a high-ranking member of the Marines, but he's also the very first user of a Logia fruit in the entire One Piece story. He's the first one. He 
has the ability of the smoke smoke fruit, or the plume plume fruit, as in the Funimation uh, dub. And uh, it's just like every other Logia, although this is the first one, so we didn't know how it worked. Keep in mind, this was back before we even knew Devil Fruits had three categories, okay? It was kind of like how hockey was in its early days, remember that? Maybe you might not, maybe if you're a really big One Piece fan and you've been reading since day one, you'll remember this. But... There was a time not very long ago where we didn't know how hockey worked. Sometimes characters could use hockey to sense life. Other characters could use it to hit devil fruit users. Other users could knock people out with it. We didn't know. We, we could assume there's probably different kinds of hockey, but we didn't know if it was just one big thing. Kind of the same thing for devil fruits. Back in the East Blue, it was like, okay, Luffy has the ability to stretch himself. Buggy can separate his body. We didn't really get a lot of other devil fruit users after that in, you know, Syrup Village, Baratier, uh, Arlong Park. None of, none of the new characters there could use devil fruits up until Logtown when we had Smoker, who was a Logia, and he's like, oh, he could turn into smoke. So we just kind of all maybe like grouped them together in one thing, and it wasn't until Drum Island where we got introduced to the zone devil fruits that Oda finally laid out the, lo the law of the land. Like, okay, there's three categories here, okay? But keep in mind, when we first met Smoker, we basically thought he was invincible because he could turn into smoke. I'm like, okay, how do you hit that? How could you possibly hurt him? Luffy was using all of his techniques and all of them were just passing through them. And Smoker is kind of unique at this point because up until this point in the story, the basic premise of One Piece was, you know, the Straw Hats land on an island, there's a big bad guy, Luffy beats the shit out of him, and they usually get a new crew member, at least during the East Blue, you know? Buggy? Uh. Kuro? Uh. Don Krieg? Uh. Arlong? Uh. Smoker? Uh, oh, uh, I'm trying to do an uh, but you're giving me the uh instead, you know? Like, Luffy could not beat him. In fact, Luffy was completely outclassed, and the only reason he got away was because Dragon was there, and Dragon kind of, you know, let that big, you know, gust of wind down the street that kind of blew Luffy away to the Going Merry and just kind of like, huh, pirate, huh? Well, you know, go out to sea. And so Dragon kind of, like, dealt with Smoker there, but it was very clear, oh, Smoker is a badass. Don't, don't screw with him. But it wasn't just because of the Devil Fruit that he a badass. Think of all the other stuff he has in his arsenal. First off, he's just a really buff dude, uh, intimidating appearance. He's the captain of a marine squad. Uh, back during Logtown, he was, anyway. He's risen through the ranks throughout the story, which is something cool. Kind of goes along with Luffy, you know, how Luffy and the Straw Hats slowly gain new bounties throughout One Piece, and the same thing with Smoker and Tashigi. Their ranks grow as well every time we meet them. Um, but uh, on top of his intimidating appearance and his rank, he also has a, a bitchin' motorcycle that runs on his smoke smoke powers. And in the four, I don't, I don't actually remember what it's called in the actual version. All I can remember, it was in the four kids dub. It was called the Smog Hog. Vroom, vroom, yeah, it's my Smog Hog. I'll go along with it just because of the hilarity. He also has a sea prism stone tipped weapon called a. Uh, all right, I've mispronounced this word so many times. Maybe this word is easy for you to pronounce. I, I, I pronounce it Jut. I pronounce it Judy. I pronounce it Juddy. You know what? Just to make everything simpler for everybody involved with this video, so just me, I'm going to refer to it as a staff. Maybe a baton, maybe a nightstick. I don't know. But if you can say this word, good for you guys. I really can't. And I'm probably, even if I could figure out how it's pronounced, I'm probably going to mess it up multiple times throughout the video. So he has a sea prism stone tipped staff that he, you know, smacks Luffy around with during the arc and pins him to the ground with a neck pin down so he can't move. So yeah, these are all the things that kind of, you know, send up Smoker as like, oh, okay, this is a, this is a big threat and we're going to have to eventually face off against him at some point, right? Okay. And so uh, kind of something similar with Tashigi, not exactly the same way, because it's not like Tashigi shows up and fights Zoro and, like, she's a major badass. No. In Logtown, it's pretty clear that Zoro is, in fact, stronger than Tashigi, but Tashigi brings up that um, her goal is to try to get all of the swords back, all of the named or the rank swords of the Mato grade back from all the pirates and the ne'er-do-wells that would dare use them for criminal, uh, um, y you know, criminal activities or whatever. That's her main goal. So... And she's very clumsy and everything like that, and it's very clear if Zoro fought against her one-on-one, -on -one, Zoro would win. However, there's a few things that kind of throw a wrench in this, particularly not just because she's a woman, and Zoro has come up and said throughout the story, you know, there are, of course, things I really don't want to cut. He's not as chivalrous as Sanji is, of course. We saw that in his fight with Monet. He doesn't necessarily want to cut down, you know, women and all that stuff, but hey, he's still Zoro. Um... 
but also it's because she looks remarkably like Kuina, who is Zoro's childhood friend. And, and, and I'll, I'll get into that later. I'll get into the similarities between Kuina and Tashigi later. There is a fly in this room, and it is pissing me the hell off. All right, just really quick. Um, I'm going to stop this video and give you a little bit of a lesson on how to catch or get rid of a fly in your room. Okay, are you ready? It's really simple. Um, if you're in a room that has windows, here's what you do. Turn off all of the lights, and then open up your window. Flies are attracted to light. Grab a tissue or something, and dead. Yeah, okay. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't want to kill the fly. I just wanted to grab him and throw him outside, but... He died, so t tell you what, I'll dedicate the episode to the fly, alright? That fly gave its life, so I could finish this video. Okay, but anyway, Tashigi. Point is, she looks like Kuina, I'll get into that later. And also, is that because she has to go throughout the uh, world to try to defeat all of these various sword masters and these villains that and these pirates that have these blades, she's eventually going to have to cross swords with Zoro. That was set up in Logtown, okay? So yeah, these, these two opposing groups, you know, Luffy and Zoro and then Smoker and Tashigi, they're going to end up fighting in their rival characters, right? That's pretty much the way it's set up from Logtown onward. However... The cool thing that Oda does is that he has Smoker and Tashigi evolve and develop alongside um, Luffy in the Straw Hats, all right? It's not like every single time they run into each other, you know, Smoker and Tashigi are like, We're Marines! We're objectively the good guys! You're the pirates! You're the bad guys! Let's bring them in, Tashigi! Yeah, let's do this! It's not like that. They do fight every now and then. They have confrontation. But every single time that the Straw Hats meet up with Smoker and Tashigi, there's always this ambiguity going around where Smoker and Tashigi find themselves on, like, a gray area where it's not as simple as they once thought. Like, they found out the Straw Hats were going to Alabasta. So they're like, all right, let's go to Alabasta and let's bring them in. But then they get all tied up in the plot with, with Crocodile and Baroque Works and, and the Revolution and Alabarna and everything. And, and, of course, there's the moment where Smoker gets chained up in freaking Rain Base, and this is all because of Crocodile. Crocodile, who is a warlord, who is an ally with the world government and the Marines. So, Smoker's sitting here in the freaking cage, like... Well, that throws a monkey wrench in things. Like, he has to sit there and actually think, like, wait a second. This isn't really the Straw Hat's fault. This is your fault, and you work for the government. What the hell? So this this starts off a, a moment where Smoker starts to realize that the world government and the Marines, they're just a little bit corrupted. I'm sure, I, I am definitely sure that most Marines join up with the group because they think that they are the objective good. You know, these are the Marines, of course. They're protecting the world against the pirates. You know, and, and granted that for the most part they're right. I mean, the pirates are the ones that are going around and, like, burning islands down and sacking villages and murdering people. You know, the Straw Hats are the exception to that. Um, but there's a lot of corruption in the Marines and even more corruption in the world government at large, okay? And, and Smoker starts to realize that as he goes around. And you know what the cool thing is? Is that Smoker's initial appearance, you think that he's going to be this really huge, like, hard-ass military kind of kind of dude. You know what I mean? Like, he's just kind of like how a Kainu is now, you, you know? Like, a Kainu is this absolute justice, you know, I will take out all the pirate scum. That's the kind of air that Smoker gave off at the beginning. He's, he also has a power that's related to, to heat or fire in some way, smoke. Um, you know, but he actually turns out to be a lot more intelligent than you give him credit for at the beginning, and also... He's the one that is actually a little bit more toward moral justice, sort of more like toward Aokiji's kind of sense of justice rather than Akainu's. In fact, Smoker and, uh, and Aokiji are actually known to be associates, or are actually known to be good friends. We see them chatting at the end of Marineford when he gets uh, he wants to request to move to G5, which is in the New World. Um, so yeah, despite appearances, he's less like Akainu and he's more like Aokiji in the sense of like, you know, justice is not this static thing. It's not always like the Marines are are correct 100% of the time and the pirates are always wrong 100% of the time. No, 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 no. It's this changing thing. Depends on the circumstances, what side you're on, uh, if if your superior is corrupted or something. And this this gets brought to a head in full freaking uh, motion when you're in the punk hazard and you had Virgo, who was the base commander, who's a vice admiral of G5. And, and 
then Smoker finds out the shit that he's all tied up in, and Smoker has to fight him, his own superior, who somebody that he trusted up to this point and thought was a you know an, an okay guy. He ends up having to fight him, and that was a really metal fight too. Um, but once again, well, that's a little bit further down the line. Right, maybe, maybe I can talk about it right now. Screw it. I'm talking about it right now. I rewatched the fight just to kind of see everything, what happened here. And, um, the first part of this fight, it's just a straight up hockey, like boxing match because Smoker is so pissed at Virgo for what he did. And once again, a little bit more of like that, that, that outer facade he has of like, I'm really tough. You know, he, he actually deeply cares for his subordinates, even though if he trash talks them and everything, you know, Virgo showed up. He, he he despises traitors at the highest regard. That is something that he just will not abide by as Smoker. Hey, say what you will about Luffy, but at least he's he's upfront about it. He's like, I'm a pirate, and I'm opposing the world government, and that's what I'm about. But traitors, man, when it comes to people like Crocodile, when it comes to people like Virgo, who are tr like duplicitous, and they're like, oh yes, I'm going to achieve a high rank in the Marines, all for the sake of the Doflamingo family, and I'm actually going to end up, you know, killing my subordinates because they're not, I don't really care about them, even though I feigned it. You know, Virgo was somebody that pretended to be a nice guy and was really a bastard. Smoker's somebody that's, you know, a hard exterior but he does genuinely care for the people under him because they are his responsibility, right? And so when Smoker confronts Virgo, he's like flying through the freaking air in that sad room and he's like, Virgo! And he charges up his hockey and they just start pounding into each other. Like, I think I think Smoker gets like an uppercut on Virgo at one point. Virgo slams him right in his like, freaking face and they just get knocked around. Uh, eventually it was revealed that Virgo does have the upper hand because at one point Smoker just goes and hockey Hockey's fist and just punches Virgo square in his face and Virgo just hockeys up his face and he's like did that make you feel better Smoker did did you get all of it out of you there all that anger at me and Smoker has a moment where he's like oh shit <laughs> and then Virgo just unloads on Smoker and he gets beaten down um now, the point of this fight, and I've made a mistake on this before, that's why I went back and watched the fight, because I used to say that Smoker was kind of an idiot in this fight, at least with his Devil Fruit ability, because he was a... I, I remember the one scene where Virgo was, like, uh, he was, like, chastising Smoker, because he was like, you're spreading out your Logia powers, and, of course, using the Smoke Fruit, he can make himself... He can basically make an entire, like... I don't think it's in a named technique, but it's kind of like a white room where Smoker can completely cover his opponent in his smoke and then because he is the smoke he can attack from various directions so imagine an entire like like a tent of smoke all around you and then fists hockey fists are flying out and legs and everything are flying out from all directions slamming into you that might be a pretty impressive technique but as Virgo states when you're an experienced hockey user all you're doing by doing that is just spreading out more of your body for me to hit because the smoke is still smokers body all right and as long as you have armament hockey you can hit that shit so that's the one scene i always remembered from that fight and i always kind of like man smoker's kind of an idiot but after re-watching the fight and actually seeing what really happened smoker wasn't being an idiot smoker was running interference trying to distract virgo long enough so he can get a hold of law's heart and return it to him and so then later on at the end of that law could actually finish virgo off with that epic mountain slicing move okay so that was the point of the fight and so that actually makes me think a lot highly of Smoker and also that makes me think that he is way more tactical and intelligent because that whole scene where he's charging toward Virgo and is all pissed off and they start boxing out of nowhere. I mean, I'm sure Smoker is really pissed at Virgo. That That's coming from a genuine place. But also, Smoker might be smart enough to realize there's no way I can beat Virgo in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Like, it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna need Trafalgar's help on this, which pisses me off because he's a pirate, but... Virgo is a traitor. He's worse than Trafalgar at this point. So I'm going to run interference. I'm going to do all the crazy moves and everything and go berserk. I'm, I'm going I'm to make Virgo think I'm berserk right now. Like I'm so blinded with rage. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. But in reality, I know exactly what I'm doing. Give him back his heart. And then Smoker lies down kind of all bloody and defeated. Like, all right, it's up to you now. 
and then, and then Law finishes him off. So that 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 gives me that makes me think a lot highly of Smoker. And I apologize for I don't remember exactly what video it was in, but I think a few times I brought that up. Where man, Smoker's kind of an idiot when he fought Virgo. Uh, I mean, he was pretending to be an idiot. Let's let's go with that. It was all part of his master plan. All right. So yeah, d definitely holds traitors in highest levels of contempt. And and what's gonna be with Smoker from now on? Because after the whole Alabasta incident, he wanted nothing more. But then to, like, explain to the world what happened here. He, that's what he wanted to do because that's, that's where his morality is. That's where his sense of justice is. Crocodile was a member of the world government. He betrayed all of us. He was the one that was responsible for all this. And it wasn't me that took him down. It was the Straw Hats that took him down. Okay, and so the world did find out about Crocodile, but the world government pinned all of this on Smoker. Smoker was the reason why they were defeated, why Alabasta, I mean, while Alabasta was saved and Crocodile was, and Brokeworks were defeated. And that's how he got a promotion. He got promoted from Captain to Commodore. And uh, Tashigi got promoted into to the Ensign class, which is like an officer class in the Marines. But, uh, yeah, Smoker basically had to be forced that promotion. They basically, we don't really get to see the scene with it. I don't think we do. But I can, I can kind of imagine where they sat Smoker down and after the debriefing and after Smoker explained everything to his superiors, like it was the Straw Hats. The Straw Hats came in and they, uh, they saved the day. So it was a pirate that beat a pirate at the end of this. We need to let the world know. And his superior, I can imagine, I don't know who it would have been, you know, was just like, okay, um, here's the thing. Uh, we're not doing that because we can't let the world know that the Straw Hats, they're pirates. We can't let them know that they're good guys. That's, that's not, that doesn't fit with our line of rhetoric. You know what I mean? So here's, what's, here's what actually happened, Smoker. Um, you defeated Crocodile with your amazing Logia powers. People will buy that. You're a Logia. He's a Logia. People will buy that you won. And uh, you saved the day. And we're even going to throw you a really cool award ceremony and a promotion. And also a promotion for your uh, blue-haired swordsman mistress assistant whatever whatever she is we're gonna give you both awards and everything and, and you're gonna promote and that's how that's how this is gonna go and smoker said it best later on with fujitora he was like at, at the time i just didn't have the rank he, he was a captain which is a fairly high rank but it wasn't high enough not even close to being high enough and so he had nothing left to do but just kind of bite his lip and just <sighs> all right fine nothing else i can do about it um, and then later on, during Dressrosa, Fujitora, who did have the rank, he was an admiral. He's the one that, like, prostrated himself and apologized to the entire world that uh, the Marines failed in this situation. And that was the Straw Hats that actually saved the day. So Fujitora eventually got to do what Smoker always wanted to do. And Smoker might still do something like that at some point. Um... But he realized, now you might say, well, why doesn't he just quit the Marines if he knows there's all this, cor this corruption and everything? Why doesn't he just quit? Well, I think Smoker feels like there is corruption, but I can maybe do something about it. Now, maybe that might be a little bit of naivete on his part. I do not know. But I think that's his basic, like, thought process. Because he sees stuff that's really wrong out there. And, you know, even, like, his one ally in all this, well, aside from Tashigi, was Aokiji. And he, he likes to pal around with people that end in G, you know? So... Aokiji, though, he, he's no longer a member of the Marines. He went out and joined the freaking Blackbeard Pirates, okay? But hey, you know, Smoker and Aokiji, they might still have a connection. They might still be talking to each other. There might be conspiring, like, conspiring a plan. I don't know how that's going to go. But uh, he doesn't have a lot of allies left, so Smoker might actually feel like he is, like, one of the last bastions of, like, what it is to be a good Marine, what it is to have a good sense of justice out there. You know what I mean? So he's still going to chase the pirates and everything. That's what his job is. But it's slowly becoming less of like, I need to capture Straw Hat Luffy, and more on, I need to deal with this corruption in the Marines first. Okay, because... Um, after Alabasta, there's really they do have another confrontation at Marineford when Smoker fights him, but it's a very brief fight. Smoker holds him down. Luffy doesn't know armament at this point, so he still can't really hurt Smoker uh, unless he figured out the natural weakness of smoke. Like Luffy figured out the natural weakness of Crocodile's sand was water. That's how he was able to defeat Crocodile. Uh, it's possible Smoke could have a natural weakness as well. Like when he fought uh, Ace, you had fire and smoke, and there was like a line that they mentioned like, yeah, fire and smoke is kind of the same thing. I mean, not really, but they're 
basically like neutral so if you continued the fight i mean if they continued the fight i'm sure ace would have probably won at some point because i think ace just has a lot more versatility of, of, of effect and everything but um i i yeah they basically said you know this is gonna if this is if we're gonna fight it's gonna be a long fight and that's not gonna be good for either of us so they kind of skipped out but yeah there might be a natural weakness of smoke we just don't know but for right now at marine fort luffy couldn't defeat him uh hancock had to step in and she snapped smoker's rod <laughs> That's another term I could use to call it. Snapped his rod, and then Luffy managed to get away. So there's a little bit of a confrontation there. But really, it doesn't come until after the time skip. Because after Smoker gets transferred to G5, gets promoted to a vice admiral, and he's like, you know, after after the Straw Hats have re-insurged, re re after the whole Fishman Island and Sabo Odi incidents, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to capture him. It's been, it's been two years. It's been two years since I faced down the Straw Hats. I, I, I need to see where our power levels lie. I, I need to bring them in. And then, of course, they get all tied up in the punk hazard incident. And, and you know what happens with there, with Virgo and everything. And once again, at the end, um, you know, Smoker, he, he had an opportunity. They, they were all partying out there. All the pirates and the marines were partying. Like, yeah, let's do this. They could have, like, all right, we're attacking you. But they didn't because they're they're cool like that. They're like, all right, well, you know, given the circumstances, let's all chill out for tonight and tomorrow we're enemies again or whatever. And it's funny because even, at, like, at this point, Luffy, does Luffy even consider Smoker, uh, like, a villain or, a, a, like, a direct opposition to him? Like, the same way Luffy views, like, Akainu. You know, it's like, that damn Akainu, I'm going to beat the shit out of him. Because it seems like with Smoker now, Luffy's just like, hey, Smokey, how you doing? <laughs> you know, like, so that's that's the cool thing about their characters. And this is all true for Tashigi as well. She was, like I said, Smoker and Tashigi are always seen together. So everything that happens to him, all the things that kind of, all the light that starts to see in his eyes, like with Alabasta and with the world government and everything, is also hitting Tashigi. So, um... They're more, like, I would say allies, if nothing else, now, because if they show up again, and it's very possible that Smoker and Tashigi are going to show up at Wano, and I know it's like a, it's a, it's a place that's separated from the world government, they're not allied with it, and it's hard to get to, but that doesn't mean that Smoker and Tashigi might show up there, because they might be like, oh, something's going down in the Wano country. Something's going down with Kaido, and it might be involving uh, the Straw Hats. I think we should head there. So, yeah, they're not allowed to go there under their jurisdiction, but once again, I think, I think once again, that, that sense of justice is going to kick in, and Smoker's going to be like, well, the Marines said not to go, but they're not always right about everything, so let's go. I think we need to be there. So I would, and, and plus, it's a sword country, and Tashigi's there, so come on now. She, she has to be there. So, so let's, let's switch gears now. Let's talk about Tashigi. Okay, well, the most, the, the largest thing I need to mention about Tashigi, no, that's too obvious. Um, the, the most well-developed part of Tashigi's character, no, that's still not too great. Um, okay, well, <laughs> she managed to rank eighth in my One Piece Best Boobs poll, so that's, let's start off with that. <laughs> I love it, though. I, I love how that works with her. Like, because when she was first introduced at Logtown, she was like a B cup at best. All right. It was like, you know, it was just like, oh, she's a, here's a normal looking woman. She was designed to look a lot like Kuina. Uh, later on, Oda kind of gives her her own design. But slowly throughout the story, we get to see her boobs get a little bit bigger. And then after the time skip, Oda just draws her with the same basic layout. Like, whoop, whoop, mmm. And so I made the joke that like whenever females in the marines get a promotion to a higher rank they also get like uh here's a here's a coupon to a free breast enhancement surgery <laughs> actually it's it's not it's not free it's it's free but it's also mandatory you need to do this tashigi you are you are a captain now we can't have a captain a female captain in the marines going around with b cup boobs okay so right i mean look at hina hina as a captain Hina as a rear admiral. They got bigger, you know? Okay, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then we have the fun during Punk Hazard where we first see Tashigi and she's like all buttoned up and I'm like, oh, well, she's a very modest character. She's not going to be running around showing off all that cleavage the same as like Nami does. So I'm like, okay, her boobs are bigger, but it's not like we're going to see them. <laughs> Oda, 
Oh, I love you, man. You you and I need to hang out at the bar one night and just have a few cups. I don't even drink, but I'll, I'll drink with Oda. You know, okay, like, you know, you did a good job. You did a good thing. But yeah, they did the whole body swapping thing. Smoker switched bodies with Tashigi and vice versa. And the first thing that Smoker did upon being in Tashigi's curvy body was the first that he doesn't do the same thing that sanji does where it's just like oh boobs no the first thing he does is like man what is this thing is this, that's a bra smoker son I, I hate this this is so encumbering he just rips off the bra and then just leaves his jacket open and just no sense of decency like i don't even care just whatever so yeah okay yeah and then the scene where they get switched back and then she's all like <gasps> Which is like the cutest scene with Tashigi because she does a little blush and like her glass flick thing. So, okay. All right. So that's, that's the discussion about Tashigi's boobs. I know we were all waiting for that, but I got that out of the way. It got it done a lot quicker than I thought. I might bring them up at some other point, but maybe not. Okay. So, uh, Tashigi, let's, let's discuss her similarities with Kuina. You know, up until recently, up until the last few years, um, there's been a theory that's been around and it's been around for a very long time, and it's, uh, Kuina did not die. Kuina got amnesia, and then she ended up in Logtown, and then that's how she ended up in Smoker's service, and, and, and Tashigi is Kuina. And you know what? That is actually not that unbelievable, um, because it's still in the East Blue, and let's say she left the dojo, because remember, Ku Kuina's father, Koshiro, was under the idea that as a woman, she could not be like a true swords master. I'm thinking that was like the logic there. Um, and so she might have felt like, I'm going to leave home. And so she left and, and something happened. There was an accident. She lost her memory or something. And then she ended up in smoker's service. And uh, you just, they just gave her this name, Tashigi or whatever. Here's the problem with that. And the reason why I don't think Oda's going to go that route with it is because we just did all of that with Sabo. That, that was Sabo's thing. Sabo had the amnesia. Don't, when you're writing any work of fiction, except like a soap opera or something, when that shit happens a lot, like, <gasps> Dave has amnesia and doesn't remember his wife Lisa. You know, that stuff happens all the time in like soap operas and shit. But when you're writing like this stuff, like manga, don't be overusing the, the amnesia subplot. Don't be using that because it's kind of cliche. You know what I mean? So uh, we just did it with Sabo. It makes sense for Sabo. He had that, like, you know, after getting uh, almost blown up by Jalmak back in the Goa Kingdom, he lost his memory, forgot Ace, forgot Luffy. And then later on in his life, he had that trigger when Ace died. You know, okay, okay, fine, fair enough. But don't do the same thing with Kuina. All right, so I'm under the impression that, th first off, they're definitely different people. They're absolutely different people. The only way that you can maybe spin it is that perhaps Kuina is, I mean, Tashigi is a another daughter of Koshiro. You know, who knows? Maybe, because the, the dojo and Logtown, they're both in the East Blue. Um, I, I don't know. They're Kuina and Tashigi, they're about the same age. Maybe it's something like that, or maybe they just happen to look very similar to each other, okay? But they're definitely different people, okay? Um, also, the way that I think Oda kind of went out of his way to draw Tashigi a little bit more in, in, in her own style after a while. Because when she first shows up, it's basically just like, yeah, it's an older Kuina. That's all it is. But then later on during Marineford, and definitely after the time skip, we get a little bit more of a unique design for, for Tashigi. Um, so, yeah. And uh, I, I, I ship Zoro and Tashigi. I, that's, if in case you're wondering where that ship was, you know, I, I'm very standard with my ships. But come on, they're just so adorable together. I mean, aww. Now, the really awkward thing is what happens if we get to Wano. Because there's a lot of talk on the street that Kuina might be in Wano. And if Tashigi shows up in Wano, and then you get that love triangle, like, what happens there? You know, like, Zoro meets Kuina, like, oh my god, you're alive! And Tashigi meets Zoro and Kuina, it's like, wait... Huh? Who's this girl? Wait, what? <laughs> you know, that would be very confusing. Ooh, ooh, or how about this? Kuina is now a bad guy, bad girl, villain, whatever, and then she has to fight against Tashigi. <laughs> that would be a cool fight. All right, so uh, Kuina's main... Tashigi's... <laughs> I'm doing it now. Tashigi's main weapon 
is, of course, a sword. Uh, she doesn't do anything fancy like Zoro or Kaku with, like, three sword style, four sword style, 36 sword style. She has one sword that she uses. It's a Wazamono grade sword, like the Sandai Kotetsu, and it's really nothing all that fancy, uh, named Shigure, okay? And it, uh, the only reason I'm using Sandai here is because it has the same basic... I don't know what this thing is called with a sword, because this is the sheath. Um, or the scabbard, I guess, would be appropriate, because it's, you know, okay. Um, but I don't know what this part of it's called if, like, this cloth here is also on the scabbard, okay? But anyway... Uh, yeah, Shiguri basically looks like this with the scabbard, and the, uh, the guard is also kind of similar, it's just more pointed like a, like an X or a cross, but, uh, that's the basic design of Shiguri, and every time we see her in battle, she always uses, uh, Shiguri. Uh, after the time skip, she's the rank of captain, she has enough versatility and skill with Shiguri and her swordsmanship that she's able to deflect cannonballs. Uh, this was something Zoro was able to do po uh, pre-time skip, but now, uh, <laughs> Maybe they are the same person, I don't know. But Tashigi's able to do it now very easily. Um, it's also been stated by Smoker that she, Tashigi does in fact have hockey now, but she's still learning. Um, it's not on the level where she could fight against someone like Virgo, and even Smoker's hockey wasn't strong enough to fight against Virgo, really. Uh, but she does learn hockey, so against the standard riffraff, against most villains, and if she fought against, like, like Monet. Monet was a Logia, and she fought against her, and she was still able to cut her up and stuff and, and get her to bleed, so uh, she does have hockey, it's just maybe not for that, she can't maintain it on her sword for that long, and she's just, she's learning, she's gonna get there eventually, okay? Um, so, during her fight with Monet, uh, it started off as a really good brawl, but Monet kind of, like, yeah, took advantage because she's Logia, and it's like, this is a fight that kind of showed that just because you have hockey doesn't mean you're automatically gonna win against Logias. Because this is how Oda's trying to set it up. He's like, alright, you have Logias, right? Pre-time skip, Logias are basically invincible. And then he introduces hockey, and then he's like, okay, arm him in hockey, you're able to beat Logia. However, however, do not think just because you have arm him in hockey that you can now, like, one-hit a Logia user, no problem. Because the Logia user might be really skilled. Like, remember Aokiji when Whitebeard fought against Aokiji? Whitebeard hockeyed up that by Sento and ran Aokiji right through with it. But Aokiji was a really smart Logia user, so he just made a hole in his body, because he can kind of freely shape his body, because all Logia users can do that, and then that's how the Bicento passed right through. Um, so Oda's definitely trying to show us that, like, yes, okay, um, imagine it, imagine it like this, okay, if you're doing, like, an RPG element to it, let's just do that. Uh, you're fighting against uh, a certain enemy that can only be defeated with a blunt weapon. Like, uh, let's say you're fighting against a skeleton, because a lot of times in RPGs and, like, Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that, uh, you can't, like, what happens when you try to stab a skeleton? Nothing. Yo, -ho -ho -ho! you know, ask Brooke, you know, you can't. So, uh, you need, like, a certain weapon in order to defeat the skeleton. You need, like, a blunt staff or a mace or a club or something to, like, smack the skeleton with and to do blunt damage rather than stabbing or slicing damage, okay? Fair, fair enough. But... You know, even if, if, even if you have that weapon when you're fighting against a Logia user, doesn't think you're just going to immediately win. If, if the skeleton is powerful enough or skilled enough, you might still die. You know, so think of it like that. So, Tashigi's going up against a Logia user, she has hockey, she's able to deal a few damaging, you know, she's able to make uh, Monet, you know, bleed a little bit, but it's nothing substantial. And then Monet kind of goes all scary demon snow Yukiona on her, and there was that one scene where I think her shoulder gets all clawed up, and then Monet, in her snow form, like, bites down with these super, like, like, freaking one-foot-long jagged teeth and just crunches like a damn shark right down into Tashigi's shoulder. And it's it's snow, it's ice, and I'm like, oh, good lord, that's horrible. Just, just imagine that. Imagine these giant icicles just, you know, stabbing you in the shoulder, and then your, like, your whole body's, like, your arm's just going numb from the frostbite. I don't know how she recovered from that. Anime logic, I guess, you know? Because in other, and I think in any other circumstances, Tashiki, you would have lost that damn arm, okay? Um, but yeah, that that's at the point, of course, where Zoro finally gets tired of waiting, and we have the, like, badass doesn't even do it justice. Like, bad space ass moment where Zoro walks in and the music cues up, like, dun da 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 Zoro walks in, he's just like, you're taking too long, bring it, snow woman. 
And then she's like, but I didn't think you would cut a woman. And Zoro's like, yeah, of course there's things I don't like to cut, but have you ever met a fierce animal that you were sure wasn't going to bite? Da, 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 da. And then, you know, you know where it goes from there. Moss head guy meets the snow girl slices her in half with great dragon shock and she's so freaking petrified from the uh, strain of that moment post-traumatic stress that she can't even pull herself back together with her snow logia powers it's a love story that's well known throughout the history throughout, throughout the history of mankind yeah <laughs> okay um so Toshigi didn't straight up win the fight she did get the finishing blow though because at the end when to when she's just kind of like almost getting back together, that's when Tashigi takes out Shigure and does, she at least does the epic pose at the end where she's like, shing, you know, and, and cuts down Monet. So it's sort of like a tag battle. Zoro kind of carried that fight by about 85%, but that last 15%, that's all you, girl. That's all you, Tashigi. Also, something else about Tashigi I didn't bring up because it was more just comedic effect, but she's extremely nearsighted, so she has to wear glasses, and, and earlier on in the story, she was, like, very klutzy and clumsy and, like, bumping into things and knocking stuff over. It, it doesn't really happen that much later on in the story, especially when she's in battle. Like, we're never gonna have a moment where she's like, okay... Here comes incoming cannonball fire. Allow me to cut them. And she goes up to go slice a cannonball. And she's like, wait, I can't see it. And then get blasted in the face by a cannonball. So whenever whenever the heat's on, whenever she's in a serious fight, um, the, the whole you know nearsighted thing doesn't mess with her too much. It's, it's once again used for more comedic effect, like when she was speaking to the mast of a ship. She's like, you guys need to pay closer attention. And all the G5 Marines are like, Captain, that's the mast of the ship. Here are your glasses. I cleaned them for you. <laughs> You're a pretty girl. <laughs> That's how all the G5 members basically treat her. Um, but even that has a cool moment during Punk Hazard when they all just kind of throw Tashigi through the door and they're all like giving her the thumbs up like, Go on, Captain, you got this! So even, it's funny that the scummiest branch of the Marines, the G5, the ones that like torture pirates, actually kind of turned out to be the ones, aside from Virgo, of course, actually kind of turned out to be some of the better guys in the series, like, just in terms of, like, caring for their subordinates and having a sense of loyalty, you know what I mean? It's weird. Um, but yeah, that's that's how it goes. And I think Smoker is gonna turn it around now. I guess, I guess Smoker is now the one that's in charge of G5, right? So I don't know if he's gonna head back there first, or that's where he's at right now. Like I said, he's gonna head to Wano, I think, eventually, but, um... What he's doing in the intermediate time, I, I do not know. So I think the overall plan right now that Oda's trying to do with Smoker and Tashigi is they're not chasing the Straw Hats as just Marines. They're not just going to try to take them in, okay? I think what they're setting up, what he's setting... So I think overall, the basis for what Smoker and Tashigi represent right now is that they're the ones that are part of this horribly corrupted machine of the world government and the Marines, and they know about this corruption, and they're at least going to try to change it. In fact, and just bear with me on this, at the end of One Piece, when Luffy becomes King of the Pirates, because we know that's going to happen, and all this stuff is being wrapped up, I would not be surprised in the slightest if Smoker became the next Fleet Admiral. We're talking maybe a time skip away. We're talking like after the One Piece is discovered and everything, there's like a 10-year a time skip or something, and we see Luffy in his 30s or maybe even longer, like when he was in his 40s, like when Oda drew him, and he's king of the pirates like Roger, and then you also see Smoker, who was at one time Luffy's rival, even though at some point they kind of stopped being rivals in that kind of sense, and now he is the fleet admiral of the Marines, and the Marines are a lot better of an organization because of it. Now, keep in mind here, a kind of who doesn't like what the world government really in the in the Goro say do either. Akainu is all about the absolute justice, and he doesn't like when the world government goes behind him and does all this crazy shit either. Okay, um, but I think it's 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 going to be in better hands in somebody like Aokiji or somebody like Smoker rather than Akainu. Okay, because Akainu has his own problems with absolute justice and he's very hot headed and everything. So so yeah, I, I could totally see that going down at the end of the story. Maybe you don't, but I could. Okay. And, uh, in terms of power level right now, obviously Smoker is not on the same level of, of Luffy, obviously Tashigi is not on the same level as, as uh, uh, Zoro, but we're, I think they're getting there, and they might eventually get to that point, like, the, the, the level that Luffy and Zoro are at right after the, the time skip, you know, starts back up, right after, like, Return to Saba Ondi, they might get to that level 
at some point because they're always learning and they're always getting better. And uh, the next time we see them, they, you know, maybe Tashigi will be promoted to, to Commodore or something. Who knows? Maybe Smoker will be, well, no, because Smoker, the only thing after this Vice Admiral is an Admiral. Maybe Smoker could become an Admiral. I mean, he is the color white. I guess that is, because going with the color themes of, of uh, the Admirals, he would be the white something. I, I don't know what animal he would represent. But, I mean, I guess he could be. I don't know. I, I, would, I would like it more as, like, end of One Piece, there's a time skip, and then, like, 20 years later, Smoker is the new Fleet Admiral. That's, that's, that's something I could see happening. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to show up at Wano, they're going to be the allies of the Straw Hats again, and I think later on down the line, during, like, the final arcs of One Piece, there's going to be a, a straight-up brawl between Smoker, and it might be like, hey, how about this? How about, let's say the Gorosei are all really good at fighting. They're not just a bunch of old guys sitting around, because that's been something that's been debated. Are the Gorusei, are they actually top-notch warriors, or are they, like, just, you know, they're just advisors for the King Im-sama? They don't actually have a lot of power. I mean, Samurai Gande has the sword, but is he any good at really using it? I would assume he would be, maybe back in his younger days, maybe he's not as strong anymore. But let's say the Gorusei all end up fighting at some point. That, that might not be how Oda's going to do it, but let's say the Gorosei are all going to fight different opponents. I would love to see Smoker fight one of them. Or, hey, here's another, here's a better one. Here's a better one. Smoker versus Rob Lucci. I know I do Rob Lucci a lot. I do, like, Rob Lucci versus Magellan. Rob Lucci versus Doflamingo. Okay, all right. Let's do Rob Lucci against Smoker. I think that would be pretty good, you know? Um, especially since their, C their, their Cypher pull, I just zero... And they work for the they work for the Gorosei and the world government and the Tenryu Bito completely unquestioned. And Smoker is the kind of the one that's like, oh, I'm questioning it. You you you're unquestionable? I'm questioning it. You know, so yeah. Also, Smoker, go easy on those cigarettes, man. You don't want to end up like uh, you don't want to end up like Vice Admiral Cancer. There's actually a Vice Admiral Cancer. I would imagine they both hang out a lot, you know, out behind the Marine, uh, Marineford HQ. They have, like, the meeting room, but yeah, there's no smoking, so they're both out there puffing on it. At least, I would say, given Smoker's Devil Fruit ability, maybe he, he could smoke all he wants and he has no negative side effects because his whole body is smoke anyway. Maybe, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, don't smoke, kids. Smoking, smoking's bad, okay? Yeah, smoking, smoking's not good for you. Um... But yeah, that, that's my video I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Smoker and Tashigi for a while now, throw a video together with them. This seemed like a good day to do it because, of course, no One Piece chapter. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know uh, what you think about their dynamics. What do you think about like where they're going to go in the story, where, what, how like strong they're going to get. Um, are they going to fight against other members of the world government or the Cypher Pole, or are they going to... I mean... I mean, it would be pretty cool just to kind of close everything out by seeing, like, a straight-up fight between Smoker and, and, and Luffy. Like, that, that kind of has to happen. And then another straight-up fight between Tashigi and Zoro. We kind of know who's going to win, but I still really want to see that, you know? Because we didn't really get a good chance at that during, uh, during Punk Hazard. I think Luffy fought against Smoker, but he was in Tashiki's body at the moment, so that, not really fair, you know what I mean? We still need to see the Luffy and Smoker fight. And that's one of the reasons why Luffy, when he was learning hockey from Rayleigh, he was like, with armament hockey, I can defeat a Kainu and Smokey, you know, I can even hit them. So, that has to happen, but where that goes from there, or what the circumstances are on that fight's gonna be, I don't know. Let me know what you think below, and to close us out, here's one more close-up of Tashigi's Jubbly Jubblies. <laughs> yeah, I know my audience. It's like 96% male. Okay, have a great night, everybody!